I remember when I turned 15, I was in SS1 then. And just like every other day, this fateful day, I went to school all happy and ready to learn. But something happened. I noticed there was a spot, a red one on my skirt. I didn't realize on time until the boys in my class started making funny gestures at me. And when I realized it was some sort of blood, I became even more embarrassed. How I eventually saved myself was with the help of a cardigan from a female classmate. But like my story, I know you have your own story. The stories around menstruation and how people handle them. The story around menstrual hygiene and things that we ought to do. And sometimes the fact that we do not have access to some of these facilities is what so many girls out there are experiencing. Hello and welcome to Ghana Plus, where we talk about health issues affecting women and girls in the society. My name is Doris Mayim Shishe. And of course, I'm never alone on the show. I have with me Dr. Brenda Kanisi, who will be talking to us more about some of the health and social issues being experienced by the girl child. It's good to have you, Dr. Brenda. Thank you for having me, Doris. I mean, you look beautiful. You look always. beautiful, girl. You look, <laughs> you look real good. Thank you, Doris. All right. So before we delve into the conversation for today, we'll take a short break. And of course, remember, we're talking about some of the health issues being experienced by the girl child. Stay tuned. Gain applause returns shortly. All right, welcome back. If you just join us, you're still watching Ghana Plus right here on Africa Television, DSTV Channel 254, and Go TV <laughs> Channel 17. This is where we talk about health issues affecting women and girls in the society. And of course, I still have my guest in the studio, Dr. Brenda Kanisi, who will be taking us through some of the health and social issues being faced by the girls in our society. Dr. Brenda, you'll agree with me that it is very important to talk about these issues. But before we talk about highlight some of the issues that are being faced by girls, why do you think there is constant need for us to talk about this? Okay. There's constant need to talk about this issue because it affects our health. And from the definition of health, we know that health doesn't just mean when there's absence of disease. It actually means when there's a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being. And now, since we're going to narrow it down to the girl child, so the girl child is just basically a female who's less than 18 years old. So today's um, discussion will center around, let's like, say, the health and uh, social challenges that affect um, females who are less than 18 years old. And I think it's of high importance because um, these are a vulnerable group. Mm. One, because they are children, and two, because they are females. So um, in this part of the world, we know that um, there's this excitement when maybe there's a male child that is birthed. Mm. There's this, you know, there's this jubilation as compared to when it's a female child. So maybe just you imagine, you know, the, the prestige they place more on the male child. It's just natural to make to, to, to realize that the, the pendulum is going to swing towards a certain direction. So I think that's why we're having this discussion so that we can change the narrative and be like, okay, the pendulum should swing both ways and not just be tilted towards one more side. So I think, and us here being, being females, yes, yeah, we were once a girl child. So I think it's something that we should talk more about and um, people can see why the attention is placed on this specific group, not ignoring the boy child as well, because of course, the female child does not live in isolation, do you get? But it's for us to create more awareness on why the focus is more on this group because of the issues we're going to highlight later on in this yeah. discussion. Yeah, you know, Brenda, Dr. Brenda, when I started my story, yeah. I just gave a bit of what I experienced. Now, having attended a public school, it was pretty much difficult having access to good toilets and bathrooms and changing all of the parts, which at some point I even got to realize that we're not even doing it well. So I would like to know what some of these challenges that they get to face. For instance, the girls who just um, had their maniki, who had their first menses, what are some of the challenges they experience? Did you have a story? What's your story? Okay, for me, um, I really could connect with your story because I've had um, friends who've had similar experience and I know the I, I may not experience it personally, but mm. I know that feeling of when people are mocking you or oh, laughing yes, at you, mm. and you know, she passes by and be like, oh, your skirt is stained. And if people are well educated, you will not see that they think to make a mockery of, but rather you rather protect her. And that is the whole essence of trying to talk about the girl child. Like, don't mock her, she has a weaker sex. 
protect her because she's important and she has a lot to contribute to society. So besides the manaki um, um, issue, which we'll be talking about later, you also realize the other um, social challenges mm. the girl child faces. So this can start from birth by even the discrimination of them giving birth to you as a female is already an issue in the first place. Then when you grow up, then you're predisposed to early marriage, which has its own you know, complications. Then they get to um, the female genital mutilation, which is still in place. Which, which yeah. some uh, cultures still, still practice, practice. Up to today. Then I'm sure growing up as a very young age, they shoved you into the kitchen, go and start doing chores and go and start doing that when probably the male, your male counterpart at that age, probably, yeah, would just be chilling somewhere. And I think if you grow up with that mentality, you're going to see yourself as less. And remember when I said in my definition of health, the wellness of your mental. Oh, mental. So if you grow up with that impression of I'm not good enough, like the opposite sex, it's going to affect everything you do. You see yourself like a lesser person than you were created to be. So I think that's why we need to talk about these issues. And that's why you probably see, oh, a girl, your girl girl stain and people are laughing. Mm. Because you were well informed, you know that is a normal process. It's, it's a normal, it's a normal yeah. physiological experience. So it shouldn't be made fun of. Rather, you should make sure you provide a healthy space for her to be able to handle this um, menstrual flow that is going to occur, occur every month. All right. So now, one thing I also wanted to talk about is the hygiene issues. Okay. Yeah, you talked about the fact that it's important that a healthy space is being provided for the girl child. Now, away from some of the social issues that you have highlighted, mm -hmm. I'd like us to tell our attention right now to the menstrual hygiene issue that okay. is a very big challenge we have a gap there there was a time i was having a conversation with a friend and they said if condoms can be given for free why sure. can't sanitary pads be given for free i mean like <laughs> you started by saying these girls are vulnerable people and sometimes because they come from really poor backgrounds they can afford sanitary pad that at some point ultimately affects their lives when it comes to um, having a, a clean when it comes to maintaining a hygienic lifestyle it affects them negatively what would you say about this Yes, I'm just going to take you back to the story you said. I'm sure that whole day you probably didn't concentrate in class. I left. I mean, I, had, I left school as a matter of fact. I had to go home. So let's say if there was a key information you were meant to learn that day, it was lost. You missed out. Because you were on your period that is a natural occurrence to females. And no safe space to... Safe space. So the, exactly what you said, if money is going to be pumped into such um, things like condom and all that, then provide free sanitary towels for... And they are very Young expensive women. right now. Do you understand? So I, I think it's something that can be done in collaboration. Even if, okay, you say you don't want to provide free, reduce the price so that it's affordable. Because you still see, in this present day, you still see some people using rags, mm. piece of clothes. Do you understand? Paper. Tissue paper. And just a lot of things. Even there's a documentary I was watching the other day. And in a village, one part in Africa, they were using leaves. Mm. And some people, if they can't afford it, they just isolate themselves that or for that, maybe um, four to five days when they're on their menstrual flow. And so imagine if a girl is not, doesn't go to school for those days, she's going to miss out on something huge. In, let's say, for example, she's writing her exam that period. Yeah. In an event where she goes to school and she gets really soaked up, no yeah. way to change because there's no bathroom. And if it's a mixed school, you can't, you can't be isolated. You're meant to carry that. And of course, that I'm sure it has a health impact at the end of the day. Yes, it does, because the, the, the sanitary condition is poor, so of course it's going to predispose you to infection. So that's why, you know, there's World Menstrual Hygiene Day, which is on the 28th of May every year. So it's used to create more awareness on why there should be safer measures for girls who have to experience this. That is, is a cyclical thing, so we must expect it every month. So how are we going to plan for it? And coincidentally, the, the May 28 was picked, because 28 is the normal 28 day cycle of mm -hmm. menstrual flow. And yeah. May, because it's the fifth month, Normally, your menses, you know, last for about five days. Five days, so yeah. That's average, how they yeah. got the, you know, the date that we uh, mark every year. Oh. So I think the whole, I know as medical women, we've tried to do stuff. We try to go and distribute free sanitary travel, but then again, we're limited in how much we can do because of the finances involved in this. And you also ask yourself, why is it that these girls don't have access to these um, materials? And it is low income, low income, and poor awareness. Some girls in the village are not even aware that there's something called sanitary pad. That is the simple truth. So now, even if you create the awareness and give them this um, sanitary pad, where's the money to procure Keep them? Popular, yeah. Do you understand? And now, because the society does not, how I say, they don't see females as value. So why would you? Why would they want to spend money on that? 
So I think if we see this thing from a holistic point of view, you can see how it's affecting her mentally. And once it affects her mentally, it's going to affect her physically, and then she cannot contribute to much to society. Yeah, the essence of having conversations like this is to change a narrative, to ensure that everybody is carried along, to ensure that there's more attention given to the girl child. You're still watching Ghana Plus right on Afri TV. And of course, Dr. Brenda and I have been talking about some of the health and social issues being faced by the girl child. At this point, we'll take a short break. And of course, when we return, we talk about some of the stigmas and uh, misconceptions that is often associated with someone who is on her period. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> 